The road around the edge of the race course is lined with acacia trees that spread like veins above the melting tar. In summer, they're covered with bright orange flowers and little pods that squirt a clear liquid when you squish them. I pump furiously at the pedals of my rally three-speed bicycle. The acacia pods pop and burst under the spinning tires. I'm barefoot, wearing shorts and a short-sleeved cotton shirt. My heart is pounding, not only from the effort on this hot as hell day, but also because of the risky mission I'm on. <coughs> the broad road runs past a series of narrow alleys in the rundown area of Gravel. This is an area of ducktails and drunks, of warehouses and dark, seedy shops. There are no white people around, and as I cycle up the dingy alley, I stick out like the balls on a bulldog. <laughs> Where the alley ends, I turn and ride through a gap in a huge metal door into a massive steel shed. Its huge windowless walls are blackened by dozens of braziers and wood fires glowing in the bleak interior of this almost medieval looking place. The floor space is divided into hundreds of little compartments and cubicles formed by corrugated iron sheets, old car doors, plastic milk crates and pieces of jagged and splintered timber. There are windows fashioned from broken glass panes and beds made from old doors and paint cans. There is an overpowering smell of incomboti, a pungent, milky sorghum beer. Large plastic barrels of the stuff are propped in nooks and shadows around the cubicles. This place is the ritual shed, teeming with sweaty, gleaming, half-naked Zulu men, the ritual drivers. Some work the tourist pitch, wearing ornate headgear, all feathers and horns and bits of mirror and plastic reflectors. Others, dressed in rags, cart fruit and vegetables from outlying market gardens for the Indian traders. I know where to go. I've been there before. The old Zulu pulls a huge sack from under his bed, stuffed with the finest dacha from the deep rural area south of Durban. Land a handy, he says. I passed over a scrunched up one rand note and stick my hand into the bag. He passes me a piece of newspaper in which I wrap my big handful of sticky vegetation. He waves with a toothless smile and with my pocket shorts bulging like a tumour, I mount my bicycle and head back around the race course to the large house on the edge of the open piece of land. I'm 15 years old.